Welcome back to the Loft Conversion Challenge. Now that the structure is complete and watertight, it's now time to install all of the insulation for the loft. So we've got two types of insulation that's going in today. The thicker 100mm rigid insulation, which you can see here, uh, which comes in the big panels and are cut to size. And then we've also got some smaller, thinner, 20 mil thick sheets, which are at the lower part of this section, you can see at the front here. Um, we just go back to the roof structure. This, we've constructed a, what's called a cold deck roof, which means that there is no insulation put on top of the roof, all of the insulations on the inside. So just cutting back to the structure uh, that we constructed here, you can see that we've got a ply board top. So this is relatively thin, structure that just sits all across the top and if you remember from the previous videos we put fiberglass and resin across the top of the dormer roof and that basically has made it completely watertight and what the reason we did that is it maximizes the headroom internally because um, we've built this as high as possible so the dormer's been built as high as we're allowed to go and the planning permission and if we'd have had to put insulation on top of that, it would have meant that the ceiling would be lower internally. By putting the insulation on the inside, it's meant that we've got maximum height. And we'll see in a minute that the insulation is, is put in between the joists rather than um, on the top. So let's have a quick look at the insulation itself. For the walls and the ceilings, we're using this rigid insulation which is uh, comes preformed and it's polyurethane and it just gives you the best thermal capacity that you can find. It's very, very dense. So this stuff, um, it, you can break it, but it's, it's really solid. Uh, so compared to what we put under the floors, this stuff uh, is much lighter, easier to manage, but you have to cut it to size. So we've got two different types here because current building regs for a loft say that we have to have 120 mil of insulation to give us the thermal capacity that we're looking for. We've got these boards here. I've taken a cross section. These come in large sheets, uh, sort of 2.4 meters um, across. But this, just to show the cross section, this is 100 mil thick, so it's 10 centimeters thick. And this stuff is cut to size and put in between the ceiling and um, wall joists so that we pack it densely in between each one. Moving across to the smaller, thinner board, this stuff is 20 mil thick, and this is used uh, in, at the end process that we actually fix this on top of all of the joists to ensure that there's no, therm there's no thermal leakage. So if we just left the joists exposed, heat has a chance of going through to that cold deck that we had a look earlier, whereas here, this silver edge will be underneath, and then we'll be able to fix the plasterboard to that to make sure that uh, it's totally insulated and no heat can escape through the ceiling. If we now have a look at the process of fitting the insulation, you can see uh, it's quite a messy process. The All of the sheets come in, all the insulation comes in large sheets which have to be trimmed down to size. And this is, a, this is done manually. You, you literally have to measure the gap that you're working with and then it's generally a process of trial and error. You, you cut these things down with a saw, as you can see the guy doing here. And then um, you then have to take it and put each piece individually into the cavity that you're looking to fill. So this one's being done to fit a, between the ceiling rafters. So you can see uh, this has been trimmed two or three times, this piece. Um, you just then have to fit it as snugly as possible because obviously with insulation, you don't really want any air gaps coming in between uh, the sides. So these are being fitted to be as, as accurate as possible. We will have the extra board that will be fitted over the top, but this has really just been fitted in to then be plasterboarded over later. So where we've got here, uh, potential where it's slightly loose, slightly looser than we'd like, uh, you just need to apply a nail just to make sure that it's not going to come down. There will be another board fitted underneath this and then the plasterboard will be applied as well so there's no chance of it falling off but it's just to add extra security for this section. So we've now completed all of the insulation for the loft area so if I just have a quick scan around this room you'll see that all of the vertical 
timber so this previously there's a big hollow gap here between these two timbers this has all been filled by the 100 mil thick insulation so the insulation that we showed earlier this this 10 millimeter 10 centimeters thick or 100 mil thick this has been cut to size and then is actually been pushed in between all of the individual timbers so that's all around the room and then if we look at the eaves here where we've got the cupboard that we're creating we're creating if you remember creating this cupboard where the bed head will probably go uh, in there we've got all the insulation as well so you can see the two forms of insulation we've got the soft rock wall which has been rolled on top of the ceiling below and that's got any first fix underneath it and then in the eaves itself we've put all of this 10 centimeter thick insulation and that's round all of the walls so this is now all ready for uh, building control inspection but if we just have a look at the ceiling so as we saw previously the ceiling area is being pushed the, the, we're putting the 10 centimeter thick insulation up into in between the, the joists so you can see here where this light fitting is is coming out we've left a gap so that we can put the actual down light in there but it gives you a good opportunity to see the thickness of the insulation and how it's sitting on all the ceiling but that's only 100 mil and the building regs say it has to be 120 mil so what we've done is we have then fixed the thin sheets so remember this thin sheet of 20 mil thick insulation so that's different to the, the bigger sheet it's a thin sheet all of these have now been fixed to the ceiling so you can see the whole ceiling area is now completely covered with all of these sheets of insulation and that's also on the eaves around where the velux windows is the, the bit that's in the actual room itself that's all been covered with this 20 mil thick insulation as well and the reason for that is it it, it creates this uh barrier to stop the heat going out if we if, if it was left like this then this timber here is actually touching the ply board at the top so you can see the timber touches the ply board which all that is above that ply board is the resin roof that we saw previously so there's no thermal insulation capacity in that roof so if we left the room like this and put plasterboard on it all the heat as it touched the plasterboard would disappear straight up this timber would be cold and would suck all of the heat through the, the roof and we'd have issues with um, heat loss and possibly also with uh, condensation so rather than leaving it like that we have to cover it so that it means that if the heat is coming up it's actually just going to be bouncing back off this i mean this will all be covered with with plasterboard and then plastered so you won't see any of this but it just shows you all the insulation that's in place that's now acting as a double layer so we've got the, the thick stuff in the walls and then we've got all the thin stuff that is on the ceiling so this room is now completely finally insulated the floors insulated which we saw previously so this was the soft rock wall so this stuff over here that comes in the big bags um, which is just soft and you just roll it out a bit like carpet underlay so we've got all of that in the floor and then on the walls we've got the solid the solid insulation which is uh, cut to size so this is now ready for inspection by building control. Once they've agreed that it's all to their satisfaction, we can then uh, put the plasterboard on and then plaster, and we're into the second fix then. So we'll be fitting all the light fittings and the switches, and then getting this bathroom, which currently is still just stud work. So there's nothing in the bathroom yet. So the next phase, once we've put the plasterboard in, is to install the shower and the shower valve and the toilet and the sink and the radiator that's going in there. And we'll also be putting the radiator on under this window as well. So that's the next phase for us on the build.